Flatpak hits 1.0, but what is the frequency, Kenneth? And build your own pie, assuming you don't need all that pesky rambling about. Debian turns 25, and we have some interesting facts about one of the oldest and most popular Linux distros. Our favorite GNU image manipulation program turns 2.10.6, and things go all up. Vertically, that is. And I'm toying with the idea of moving our audio stack over to digital. Stay tuned for that hot fire and expect a few glitches on this episode. And um, we're going to talk about the Steam thing. I know it's not a gaming show, but we got to mention it. So stay tuned because it's another great day for Linux, everyone. Let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to take that midweek break and uh, talk about some of the things we found fascinating going on. Um, I'm Vince Stone. That is Joel Bryant. And that is that just, uh, oh, it's just Pedro. You know, don't <laughs> stop. <laughs> it's terrifying. Pedro never did that again. Uh, <laughs> Portuguese. Portuguese. That's a thing. That's a thing. What's been going on, Jill? Oh, boy. I've been doing a lot of game testing since yesterday for obvious reasons. Uh, uh, of course, we'll be talking about in the show. And my Steve husband just took off this morning to go to Montana to help his mom move. So I'm going to miss him a lot. <laughs> oh, no Steve uh, husband yeah. to antagonize and shut around. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, no, he's, he's still going to be there. So. <laughs> How about you, Pedro? <laughs> Well, uh, the thing, uh, well, the thing that's going to hold the games when the Steambox 360 is finally put together, the Western Digital Blue M.2 SATA 500 gigabytes uh, has arrived. It's, uh, yeah, no, I'm just uh, aching, aching to have the necessary funds to buy the rest of the stuff I need so I can finally put it together. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> should be fun. That should be interesting. Um like I said, not much over here. I, I think uh, rigged is a wholly inadequate word for what I have set up right now, but mm -hmm. it's strictly for testing. Because like, if you looked at the digital aspect and the analog as aspect of everything wired up, it looked like I had a loaded gun to my head and <laughs> said, you got to get this done now. But I, I'm like half and half, like equally as ashamed of it as I am proud that it is working. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that happened. Uh, stay tuned. You probably will get Audur tutorials from me if this sticks around. So let's celebrate a birthday, shall we? <laughs> Yay! Debian turns uh, 25. And there's lots of neat facts about Debian some people may not know. And um, uh, it is one of the oldest, most popular, and actively developed Linux distros. And the, the name of it came from uh, Ian, Mur Ian Murdoch and his then wife. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I just spaced. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, it actually, uh, for me, uh, Debian is the Swiss army knife of all the Linux distros and supports every computer architecture and the advanced package Tool apt revolutionized the way we install and uninstall software in Linux and has become the canonical for all the package management tools in every Linux distro, including, of course, Debian based Ubuntu. And uh, Debian also has, has a testing and a stable release. And um, they also actually have a, 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 a BSD, a version of FreeBSD, which I used. Uh, years ago, actually. <laughs> so that, that, that's pretty cool, too. A lot of people don't know about that. And all the releases are based off of Toy Story characters, uh, bec because after Ian Murdoch, Murdoch left the distro, um, it was taken over by um, a gentleman who works at, at Pixar. So uh, that's why we have Toy Story characters for the names. And yep. yes, thank you, Katana Steel and chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> Debian uh, testing is very stable for him, and me too. I have installed a lot of my machines. Yeah, it's uh, it's not uh, the 25 years of uh, Debian that I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating 14 years of being the slightly less brown <laughs> version of Ubuntu. I don't know, man. I mean, you know, one thing you can say about Debian, love it or hate it, which I, I'm a huge fan of it, is it's completely free software, so you can call it, you know, 
GNU Linux completely mm-hmm. unironically. I'm down with that. <laughs> and you know, I know people joke around. They're like, oh, Debian's stale. But you know what? You know what? If you're doing something that's an appliance at the house, it has that ability to just work TM. And that's something Google's even went back to using it. Um, yeah. from Because they were using Ubuntu for a minute and somebody went, wait a minute, what? And <laughs> They've moved back to that business. So that's pretty cool. That's yeah, some, yeah. some of those things I didn't know. And that was kind of interesting to learn them. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to fix my mistake. It's it's uh, Deborah and Ian. Uh, Ian Murdoch and then his den, then wife, Deborah. That That's where I was going with that. <laughs> right. So from Debian, we talked about Kubuntu. Let's talk about Hulu. Can't even do that. Can't even, can't even do the accent with that. Uh, just Lubuntu. Development newsletter nine. The big thing in this that really the reason I'm bringing it up is they're going to take the Pepsi challenge with their desktop experience. They're going to be moving to Wayland. They're uh, porting open box. Well, hang on, not Wayland. They're going to be using Mir. Jeez. All right. Well, they're going to use both. They're going to be using Wayland as the graphical server and Mir as the window manager. It, it, it's, it, it's terrifying because they're porting open box over to the Mir display server, which I, uh, am I alone, guys? Uh, what I was like, wait a minute, I thought that was a dead project. Nope, turns out it's still technically being developed over at Canonical. It is, and it's uh, it's odd to see. I guess uh, there were enough people with an investment in Mir that they just couldn't let him go. And by Mir, I don't mean Patrick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they claim that uh, come release of uh, Lubuntu 2010. Uh, they will uh, have the Wayland plus Mir thing going with the full LXQT suite, whatever that happens to be, because it seems right now to even not be completely set in stone, pun moderately intended, uh, uh, what they're going to be using for the uh, the software. You did yes, that but... simply because I can't tell you peace among worlds on this show, but I'll get you back soon. <laughs> And uh, yeah, if you're still running uh, Lubuntu 16.04 and you were waiting so you could just uh, update from one LTS to the other, you can now. All right. What do you think, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm actually still very sad that Lubuntu is discontinuing 32-bit support. So that's going to affect some of my older machines here. But it's it's really good that they're they're going back to, to they're going to go to Wayland. So that's that's actually really awesome. <laughs> Good to know. What do we have up next? Up next, we have some controls for the tubes. Say you're um, you you like to have the media controls in the same way that every other local media player has them nowadays in uh, Linux desktop environments, which is in the system tray or in an applet or a widget of some kind. Uh, well. Now, you can have those uh, very same media controls on uh, YouTube videos, and I'm guessing this Mm. would be relatively easy to bring to other things, but right now it only supports um, Chromium-based browsers. Uh, So your Chromes, your Operas, your Vivaldis, what have you, they will all have this extension available to them and you will get those media controls right there in the system tray along with uh, everything else's. Uh, For me, what I really want is uh, if someone would integrate this with KDE Connect so I could pause YouTube videos or just have them pause automatically whenever someone calls me. uh, That's a really neat feature that I still haven't gotten used to, but it's really neat when I realize, (laughs) oh, that was KDE Connect that paused that video. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's also. <laughs> yeah, um, it actually worked really well for me under Cinnamon. And they said they are going to be releasing a Firefox extension very soon, which is really right. good. And this actually makes sense because a lot of our audio players under under Linux, like Clementine and, and Ardor, already do this, uh, playing sound playing uh, sound in the sound applet. So it makes sense to have video there as well. So and it's convenient. <laughs> Yeah, that's 100% really neat. Uh, have you ever considered just using like VLC remote or something like that, Pedro, instead of That having... requires installing another app on on my both my phones, the tablet, the uh, the Chromebook. Nah, nah, nah. KD Connect. It's already installed in all of them, so yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Fair enough. That's a neat, neat thing if you want to. I don't know. I don't like desktop. Uh, <laughs> shocker, ladies and gentlemen. I don't like desktop notifications. I, I know no one yeah. assumed <laughs> that. But Okay. Uh, Mozilla has cleaned a bit of house. Yes, they did. They did. Uh, they had a lot of reports that a lot of the extensions were using more than they should. Let's say you had a simple extension just to change like some CSS elements in a page, and that extension was also sending that information back to whomever created it. And that was a big no-no. That uh, Mozilla said that's not on the up and up and we're going to get rid of them so 23 firefox add-ons that uh, were being a bit snoopy were basically uh ejected from the mozilla extensions uh web page and i this is a really good thing i really want mm -hmm. google to do the same with those android apps that are requesting far more uh permissions than they actually need I really want them to do that, uh, but they haven't yet. So good on you, Mozilla. Setting the standards. All right. Now, immediately yeah. I thought to myself, <laughs> why hasn't Chrome did anything about this? Or yeah. just Alphabet or Google, whatever they're calling themselves this week. Because, you know, leaking out information, I, I thought they would hate the competition. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> yeah. And, well, only Google can snoop. <laughs> mm. Uh, some developers have pushed back with this, you know, claiming, you know, it wasn't outright maliciousness. Um, what is the German yeah. companies are like, this is just bad code on our part. So they're trying to get everything sorted back out. I, I say good on that. I and mean, some of them were just straight up malicious. Mm -hmm. Jill. Yeah. And this actually, there's a, a lot of, of, of the most widely used add-ons like YouTube downloaders and blockers and pop-up blockers are on the list. And I've even used some of them in the past. I don't anymore, but, but that was uh, very interesting to, to see. And I, and I'm glad they're uh, Mozilla's blocking those and um, yeah, Good for Firefox for doing this first, especially since, you know, they were the ones who originally, they were the original plug-in web browser. So um, yep. it, makes, it makes sense. And security is on the top of their list right now. So that, that this is an awesome thing for them to be doing. Indeed. Uh, so uh, a couple of us have these fancy NVMe drives and uh, kind of want some help over at, uh, what was this? This is from the Google blog, Gnome. right? Gnome. Yes. Gnome. They want those bits for that firmware. And yeah, this is something I think everyone should help out with because we desperately need better tools for managing NVMe under Linux. Like you, like the idea of being able to do type of smart stuff like that. That's an experience in itself. If you've ever had to do it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's, uh, the, the thing that's really scaring me here is uh, trusting GNOME with possible firmware updates to my NVMe SSD currently running on this box. It's like, uh, mm, no, mm, I will totally submit my, uh, my data. That's fine. You can have it. But uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah that that that's that's not something i'm i'm a, a fan of either <laughs> and but 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 what's awesome about this is it's it's richard hughes who helped get Len lenovo to the linux vendor firmware yep. servers and you know he's asking us for help which is really really awesome um to have more firmware support under linux especially nvme uh this would be mm -hmm. awesome it could uh i could see it as even helping bring the temperatures down on the chips because that's really been an issue <laughs> so um this is this is really awesome let's All see right. what do we got gimp 2106 <laughs> graphics yes yes, yes. <laughs> so uh the gimp 2.1 10.6 has just been released and there's uh, lots of really cool, cool changes. And uh, one, as uh, Ven mentioned in the show notes, is that now, now you can put your text vertically, which really helps with, with other languages as well as English. <laughs> and in fact, uh, most of the uh, 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 other uh, paint programs like Photoshop, that's just a staple. So it's, it's really good that they, they put that in there. 
And the horizon straightening tool now lets you do vertical straightening as well, which is really awesome. So your horizon line, you can adjust it vertically. And uh, the giggle based filter long shadow lets you create drop shadows very, very easily uh, from the panel. All, all the customization is there to in increase the, the depth and the color. And this is awesome because before you had to use several tools to achieve the same effect. And they also streamlined the file di dialog. It used to have have uh, you know the choice of the file format in in the in the top and then the the bottom of what you'd save it as. So ser searching was a little confusing for um, and looking what files you had was a little confusing. So that's now all been compressed to to one dialog. And um, I'm looking forward to a GIMP extension repository, which we'll be adding in the future to easily install plugins and effects. And, and this that is one of the- That would be very nice. <laughs> yes. This is one of the powerful things about the GIMP. And one of the reasons why it is one of my, my favorite um, um, image paint and, and photo editing programs is because of this custom ability, because it is open source and all the different scripts. And I have one I use all the time called, called GAP, GIMP Animation Plugin. And it's not installed by default. You have to go into repositories and find it. And sometimes it's a pain because it won't work with certain versions, but with others. So I, I will be really happy when I can just one click that install. <laughs> so yeah. I'm really excited about this release and we're looking forward to the GIMP 3.0 release as well. <laughs> yeah, a couple of things with that. I mean, it is on Flathub. If you want to go play it with it right now, you don't need a repo for that business. Uh, one thing I want to ask, can I finally draw a circle in under three steps? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> they streamline that. And and uh, actually, that's a function that takes a few more mouse clicks under Photoshop. So GIMP has that ahead. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go right on to flat packs and why Pedro is confused by 1.0 releases. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I am just confused because, well, it's flat pack. It's reached version 1.0. It's finished, Yay. right? It's 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 done, right? Uh, no, okay. They're going to keep developing it. They're going to keep adding stuff. Okay. So, uh, what does ex the one mean here exactly? Because yes, it's a feature update. It's like one point I don't get why everyone was making such a big fuss about. Oh no, Flatpak has now reached one point And yeah, you've seen the articles. They've been all over the internet. Why? It, it, it's just a number. Let it go. <laughs> oh, well, this release is supposed to be faster and more reliable and has fixed a lot of the bugs. And it actually has some very new important features. It introduces per app permissions like Snap apps. And that's something we I, I've always really appreciated about Snaps. And um, it has a lot of new features for developers, including it allows developers, um, they can mark the versions of their apps as end of life instead of just you mm -hmm. know, hanging in there forever. <laughs> and um, there's a new mechanism for apps to restart themselves, which is really, really nice. So um, you, you don't actually have to exit the app and go back in. It's, it's supposed to auto restart. And um, that's awesome. And uh, they're also taking the beta label off their FlatHub service, which is really All wonderful. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, so those, they those should have called it FlatHub 1.0, not Flatpak 1.0. Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't yes. have to worry about it. I mean, at, at the end of the day, snaps are yeah. better, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aww, Actually, no, one of the wonderful. things that they did that uh, Jill mentioned <laughs> is uh, the way that they handle permissions. If uh, a Flatpak mm -hmm. application requires certain specific permissions, it now uh, does the same thing that snaps did. And a very it's very similar to what Android apps do uh on Android, it's yeah. uh, you start it, they'll ask, "Oh, I need a permission to access the SD card." And then if it uh, it's something to, that lets you load up images, it's like, "Oh, I would like to uh, look at the images on your device. Can I do that?" And basically, that's what uh, flat uh, pack applications do now. So that's that's great. <laughs> All right, Jill, tell me about yeah. Android integration. What's this? Yeah, so this is a, a new version of uh, GS Connect, uh, version 12. And there's um, actually a lot of bug fixes, including a major one um, that the writer was talking about, about, that apparently there was a bug that you couldn't access files from your Android device 
in 1804. And so they fixed that in GS Connect version 12. But th this is actually a really, really um, a neat way to integrate your Android device with your, your GNOME desktop and get all your notifications and whatnot uh, without having to install KDE Connect and all the libraries of KDE. So it's, it's really an awesome um, tool. And um, I actually haven't used it yet, <laughs> but I know Pedro um, you, you has used it before. Yeah, I have it uh, running on the uh, Ubuntu 18.04, like the default Ubuntu 18.04 that I have running inside a VM on my X240. Uh, and my X240 uh, runs Fedora 28 Cinnamon because I want to just have all of the uh, desktop environments so I can poke at them and see how they break so I can make educated opinions when I tell everyone that they suck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, one of the things that uh, the GS Connect uh, application does not do is integrate with anything other than GNOME, even something like um, Cinnamon, which is very, very uh, heavily based on GNOME. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Mm, doesn't and work, it yeah. would be nice if they added that little bit of functionality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's actually kind of one of the reasons I haven't used it, because I don't use them no much. But if it was available yeah. on Cinnamon, <laughs> I would use it. <laughs> All right, coming up next, Multiview with OBS. It's definitely 100% a thing. This is 22 not one um, Basically, just a hotfix after the 22 not, which added uh, one thing I was interested in. One thing that we use for... Return video is the multi view send out, which now we have some options so I don't have to send this kaleidoscope of pixels to everyone. A <laughs> uh, bunch of bug fixes. They've changed a couple of things on the UI, but Jill, I thought you, I believe you said something about the volume meter. They've kind of changed oh. that up. Oh, yeah, yeah. They improved that a lot. And, um, First off is the audio can be oriented to either horizontally or vertically in the mixer panel, which is really nice, especially if you have uh, lots of uh, pots and vol volume meters that you want to show and put on display. And But most importantly, I noticed that audio decibel levels are more accurate now switching to true peak instead of sample peak in the audio settings panel. Um, it actually takes more CPU usage to, to use it, but it's much more ac um, accurate and doesn't uh, flail, flail around, or the gain does not flail around as much with it. It's, it's oh, more stable. But, but I have just grown accustomed <laughs> to the suggestive meter that was the volume control. Then. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, that relative uh, volume indication. It's like, now you're talking really loud, but it sounds as though, according to OBS, you were just talking regularly. Like well, before. Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. I mean, I always use uh, the best volume meter on Linux is Audacity. Even if you're not yes. recording anything, if you're setting up something, that yeah. works. And um, But hey, it's out. I used it. Pedro, I believe you used it uh, yesterday when you streamed some Fallout 3. Yeah. Go check that nonsense out. And, uh, New Vegas, but yeah. Yeah, whatever. It's oh, some yeah. Windows game. <laughs> and then now, now you can show us twenty four scenes um, with with multi view. Oh, I could. How, how would you like to keep track of that? I don't have to keep track of it. I'm not the one looking at it, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, speaking of playing Windows games on Linux, it's wine time. Yes. Producing. A new version Yay! of Steam Play. It's a thing. In 2010, we announced Steam Play, a way for Steam users to access Windows, Mac, Linux versions. All right. So two years ago, they started this effort. And what have they done? Uh, basically, they've uh, spun their own version of wine. And, you know, hey, we, we do our best to avoid gaming related topics on this show because we have one just for that on Saturday. But this allows you to launch Google Earth. So technically, we can talk about it. <laughs> Life hack on that. Um, their version of wine, it's called Proton. It's thing. It's mm -hmm. modified distribution of wine. Nothing new about that. Uh, it is using on applicable titles the DXVK, which we did learn from this announcement. Valve has been financing that. And that mm -hmm. explains the progress. <laughs> explains why they didn't yeah. accept donations and also explains, yeah, that breakneck pace that it's been developed mm -hmm. at. Um, Currently, right now, it has the uh, there's a small list of games that they say, okay, these should work. But in, in true Valve style, you can click a button and say, have at it, put it in Wild West mode. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's currently a list of people trying to figure out what does and does not work. 
Jill? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, this is wonderful for us Linux users. Of course, yesterday was a big day for us. A one-click in install from Steam to run Windows games, just wonderful. And this, to me, proved Valve's commitment to the Linux users. And, you know, maybe this is this is what they're going to be planning, of course, for their Steam machines as well, for those games that don't come over to Linux. So um, that's it just really, really awesome. And um, uh, it, it definitely for me, it made makes with the working on Ubuntu 1604 with the latest NVIDIA drivers on the games I tested. And I test, tested the Witness, Thumper and Puzzle Dimension all of which work on Steam Play, but they actually perform better on Lutra, so it's better performance and faster rendering. So kudos to to Strider in chat, our, our Matthew, and Lutris, because he's he's done a lot of uh, performance tweaks with the installers to make these games run even better. So so Valve could take a, a good uh, tutorial from, from Matthew. And... Um, but honestly, I have very few Windows games in my Steam library because I'm committed to the Linuxes. <laughs> so, and um, but I'm also looking forward to trying more Windows only software in in Steam because that there's there's quite a bit of, of good animation and graphic software under Steam, and some of it's only yeah. available for Windows. And I actually did test one last night, and it did work. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> All right. I was just, uh, well, when this first released yesterday, I was kind of disappointed. It's like, oh, now you can uh, launch uh, Windows-only games through Steam Play. So I updated to the new beta. It's like, it's not giving me the option. What am I doing wrong? And I wasn't the Aww. only one having this <laughs> issue. Uh, Foxy uh, in Chat Realm was also uh, running into that. Uh, this afternoon when I got home and I turned on my PC, it's like, oh, look, the option's there now. Neat. Uh, so I tried uh, two of the uh, games uh, that they have in their little whitelist, which, uh, like Fen mentioned, you could just disable it and run it in Wild West mode. Um, but uh, uh, Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl, and um, Quake, mm. they both work very well under Wine. Uh, Stalker has the exact same bugs under Proton that it does under regular Wine. So, yeah, no. Kudos, Valve. <laughs> it's definitely not bad for something out of the gate. First try on this. Yeah, and we've seen, oh, my God, the world's burning. We'll never get native ports. It's like, uh, I don't think you're going to worry about that too much. That's still going to be going down. This is uh, yeah. spreading the love when we look yes. at it. And at the same time, terrifying developers. Because yes. <laughs> there's the yeah. added thing of like, well, maybe you could do that. But when you're playing it, in you know the wild west mode that's up to you what you don't need to do is complain on that store page saying yeah. it doesn't run because the yeah. developers don't have anything to do if they agree to have it on the white list different story so just yes, keep that in course. mind let's use a little yeah. bit of tact with that yeah valve deliberately said it's a uh, it was a uh, pierre loup griffet who uh put out the mm -hmm. uh, the announcement and he said do not Go to game developers about bugs if the game isn't listed on the um, on the whitelist. Mm -hmm. Come to us. Let us know what's not working. What's the issue? Just don't go blaming game developers for something that they're not supporting. This is Valve's doing. So take your bugs to Valve. One hundred percent agree with that. And honestly, Valve, that, that should be a big blinking box when you click that button that pops up and just stays well, there. there's an extra pop-up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, something you can't get rid of for like three minutes so it sinks in. <laughs> okay, we're going to get into a slice-up pie, but first we're going to say, hey man, thanks for supporting the show. Uh, a couple of ways to do that. We had this crazy bizarre business model where we just give everything away for free and hope you enjoy it and maybe in turn buy us a cup of coffee if that's your thing on Patreon dot com forward slash linux gamecast we got affiliate links that doesn't cost anything you're gonna buy the stuff anyway we got a wish zone even if you don't care about that go check that out you can see all the stuff that we've put together in this studio new egg humble just released uh hum you know what wait a minute we need to think about that humble bundles just got a lot more interesting for people didn't they pedro Oh, yes, they did, because oh, yeah. now all of a sudden those 20 pages of unredeemed Windows keys that you have on uh, your humble library, you can redeem them now. Admittedly, and chances are they will work. 
My, mine's too bad. I'm like at 11 or 13 pay. I don't even, I don't want to tread there. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks everyone who make this show possible. Without you, we couldn't do it and we do enjoy doing it. So, yes. Um, yes, oh yeah. Do. Oh, hang on. Uh, like and subscribe <laughs> or whatever. But it does help if you uh, retweet. Yes. Is that we'll what the kids the do? Smash the subscribe yes. button. Yeah, yeah retweet. <laughs> Share the show. It doesn't cost you anything and it makes me happy. Google the pluses. All right. Ring the bell. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> then YouTube will notify you two days later. <laughs> True story. Yeah. Let's get into a slice of pie. Yeah. Um, hack oh, day. boy. This, yeah, this is yes. an awesome project. Build your own Linux single board computer. Oh, and uh, so make your, your very own <laughs> Blueberry Pie, <laughs> an open source single board computer running Linux using the all winner V3 chipset and a two layered board that is inexpensive to produce. And besides the ARM Cortex-A7 at 1.2 gigahertz, the all winner V3 system on chip has built in 64 megs of RAM, which of course isn't a lot, but no. and an Ethernet. But the, the fact that it's contained on, on that little chip makes it a, a lot less expensive to produce. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, the big thing here. It really is the low cost and the, the chip itself comes with the RAM baked in. But it was all sounding really, really great until it's like, oh, it comes with 64 whole megabytes of RAM. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you holding out for the 65? <laughs> it would be nice if it had at least, I don't know, one gigabyte of RAM. It would be, the word you're using for is usable. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's... Maybe you want to do an embedded project on, on the steroids, and this, this might be a good... What steroids? The moment you throw anything at it, it's like, nope, Rev's full. <laughs> Arduino-type project on steroids. All right. Com <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> at this point, it barely... It was 64 megabytes. In today's uh, internet speeds, it barely qualifies for a four-port switch. I would I'm not buy sure a switch that only chug. had 64 max. Of, um, <laughs> yeah. But listen, listen, this is something you can build yourself. So like maybe if you're doing yeah. some education or something like that and you, you want to teach kids how to burn their fingertips off with soldering iron. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Teaching yes. how to use it before. <laughs> 100%. Uh, we got a little bit of feedback. If you want to get in touch with us, Pedro, how do they go about it? You can do... The little feedback, the little screaming in our direction by going to linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button. Just uh, be, be sure to uh, pick uh, LWDW from the little choosy box. Still hasn't The name still hasn't changed. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the easiest way, and it's guaranteed that we will uh, feature your thing right here, unless it's something that you probably want us to answer quicker, or it's something that we can just answer right then and there. Chances are we may feature it too to put it to everyone listening uh, so they can mm. leave uh, their own answers. And uh, we did have one bit of uh, feedback this week. I, I, I love the part where I wrote something in the notes and Pedro just glossed right over it. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, <laughs> after two years, comments and registration are once again open to the public. Yes, so. now you can leave comments on the um, on the shows as well. Uh, and mm -hmm. all the videos that uh, show up on LinuxGameCast.com. Just uh, leave a comment down below. It uses Discuss. Pedro, it's... no, it doesn't. It doesn't? No. What does it use? <laughs> the built-in comment system for the WordPress install? Yeah, it's running off of Discuss. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's <just> WordPress. <laughs> oh. oh, well. Uh, it, it anyway... Really... But uh, what I, the, the point I was going to make is you're explaining to the type of people who watch a show about Linux how a comment system works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I'm going to be condescending, I'm going to be condescending all the way. What are you getting at? Oh, man. Oh, 7.1 surround. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Take it to the drop. We were talking about Dropbox last week, and they're like, hey, uh, ext4 GTFO on that. This comes from... Tinu Saizen? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's no, how he's pronouncing it, well, yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll take that. He writes it. I switched from Dropbox to... Um, so Pedro, you read this. <laughs> okay, uh, so... 
I switched from drop, uh, Dropbox to SyncThing after Dropbox changed how their public folders work. SyncThing is great, uh, open source, secure, etc. Now, of course, it lacks the cloud storage aspect of Dropbox, but this can be remedied by installing it on a uh, by installing it on a server. <laughs> see, see then, my brain tapped out when it started reading the grammar. <laughs> That's why I keep it. Do you take it? <laughs> and then you can have as much cloud storage as you'd like, and you have full control over it. That's the beauty of sync thing. Uh, and it'll probably, that's a lot of hands, uh, be still cheaper than paid subscriptions with Dropbox or other commercial cloud storage solutions. Yeah, it, it will probably be cheaper unless you're running a really, really old PC as your server and you're hosting it off of that, then the electricity bill is going to rack up. But yeah, outside of that, sync thing. Um, what was the other one? Next cloud. Next cloud. Yeah, yeah. next cloud. There's BitTorrent sync as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's, there's quite a couple a few different ways space. to do it. This, yeah, <laughs> but this I thought was this was a, a really good uh, you know uh, option if you don't want to uh, store files in Google Drive and and uh, Dropbox. So you know, create your own NAS and and do it that way. <laughs> well, I mean, NAS is yeah, especially cloud NAS is. I mean, the hardest part's like sneaking them into your friends houses and closets and they don't see oh them. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm just going to uh leave this here put some blankets on it there we go <laughs> to this day my aunt has no idea what the sling box in her <laughs> living room is <laughs> it's just leave it plugged in so i can watch my bbc okay thank you yeah um <laughs> that's the thing hey beautiful people we gotta bounce out of here um tomorrow tune in uh jordan's gonna be doing a thing he's gonna be playing some games i have no idea neither does he right now at this point but check us out at linuxgamecast.com forward slash live and we have a schedule and all that nonsense but uh that's it i'm at vin stone that's <laughs> at jill linux girl and yeah. <laughs> unaccounted for now let's see if this uh music's going to work maybe it will maybe it won't <laughs> Is it coming in? Oh, there it there goes. It is. Yes. yes. Now I got a new buttons. <laughs> Boom. Credits. <laughs> wow. Vivaldi crashed on me twice during this show. <laughs> I thought it was just me with the um. Uh, the show notes. I was having on. all kinds of issues. <laughs> That's why I spaced a few times. And I'm sorry, Pater. I took one of your stories. But <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I was having mini fires. <laughs> At least Pedro's video didn't go away. <laughs> but more importantly, our audio is just fine. <laughs> yep. 132. Yes. You did this. Yay. You all listening to this. You did this. <laughs> Thank you, Chat Realm and all our patrons. We all love you. Love you.